please open up your Bible in First Corinthians 9. I'm going to read from there. First Corinthians. <laughs> Alright, so uh, chapter 9, verse 19 to 23. Okay, so we're going to read. If you have your Bible, your ordinary Bible, or if you have your electronic Bible, your cell phone, your iPad, your tablet, your pet. So uh, this is, uh, is going to be a short message. Alright? So we don't know. Alright, so let's read from starting from verse 19 to 23. Let's read all together. It's, it says here. Even though I am free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. Hallelujah. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. <clears throat> when I was with those who followed the Jewish law, I, I too live under that law. <clears throat> Even though I am not subject to the law, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I do live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. <clears throat> In 22, when I, am weak, when I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness for I want to bring the weak to Christ. <coughs> Yes, I try to find common grounds with everyone, doing everything I can say, I can to save some. In verse 23, I do everything to spread the good news and share it in its place. And let's bow our head and ask from the revelation from our God, personally, individually, in each one of us. Father God in heaven, Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus, for your message, for your word, O oh God, today. Speak to us, Lord. You lead us, O oh God. Lord, Holy Spirit, speak to each one of us, Lord, what you want us to reveal in this message, O oh God. Well, I believe, O God, and we believe, Lord Jesus, that you have a purpose for us, to all of us here, right now, O God. And Lord, right now, you are here with us. All the glory in your name, in the name of Jesus, and everybody say, Amen. Amen. Alright, so, <clears throat> next week, as our campaign, as our, not campaign, as our um, announcement a while ago that we don't have service for next week. We will have our service at the pub at the other day, so we're going to do that Saturday evening or Saturday evening. So if you're open it up, most of you will be available. So we're not going to be here, and that uh, family day, maybe some of you may ask, uh, why don't we have a service here? Okay, that family day is also a part of our evangelism to reach out to other people. Okay, so if you're going to, if you have some invite, then we can bring that. And then bring that person or your friends or co-workers to that camping. And that uh, family day camping is not only for us to enjoy one another, to enjoy, I mean, to company, you know, fellowship with one another, but also it's a time to evangelize, to reach out to other people, right? Because some other people, they may think, if you invite them to church, they say, ah, uh, maybe next time, maybe later, or maybe next time, right? But if, if you invite them in non, uh, if you start them, or try to connect them in, uh, in that kind of activities where there's it's not church. Okay, they say they may think that oh, it's not church, so they may not get uh, 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 they may not feel bad about it. Okay, so they will attend. They will come with you. So please invite your friends, your coworkers, your classmates to that uh, family day next week. So we're gonna start from Friday. The 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Amen? <clears throat> so, okay, so that message, our family today, is related to our message for today, our revelation for today, and the same with our, our, uh, the way of the Lord, the His will in Window, Scotia, so, as I'm wearing it, for Window, Scotia, Christian Okay, so last Friday, I praise God. A while ago, I didn't uh, say thank you, but I would like to take this opportunity to praise God. I thought I'm gonna die. Okay, I thought I'm gonna die last. I think last Thursday. That was Thursday. Is that Thursday. Thursday. That, that was Thursday. So this is what happened. Um, and I posted that in Win Family message about. I think we're kind of 
infected or affected by the by the salmonella or the contamination of that chicken nuggets from PC. Uh, so so the whole family, as I said last week, my thumbs not feeling well. Well, I'm when I'm standing here, so I'm not really feeling well that time. So the last two weeks ago, my son not feeling well for four days, and then my wife not feeling well, and then last Thursday we brought our daughter to the hospital, to the ER due to vomiting, overnight vomiting, and then I thought that oh, I'm the only one who's free, right? So last Saturday night, last week, okay, I start my thumbs started to you know to rumble, not to settle, and then Saturday morning when I'm when I'm standing here with you, my stomach, my stomach's not feeling well. And then Thursday, so after four days then, later, then that's my that my stomach started to get upset. It's really, really upset me. You know, <laughs> not upset me, but my stomach. Okay. So this is what happened. Early morning, around seven o'clock when I wake up, I thought I'm un I am only hungry. Okay? Like really uh, acidic maybe that's why. So I take ranitidine. 150 milligram. For some of you, no, uh, who don't know that I'm also a registered nurse at the vocation. So I took uh, ranitidine, Santa 150. I said just to settle my stomach, maybe it's for hyperacidity. Of course, I pray to God. And then after 30 minutes, still not feeling well. Okay. So I took another medication. Said I'm not supposed to take this medication, but I think this medication is powerful enough. That really did it. So I'll take another medication, omeprazole, to settle down my stomach. And then I'm going to pick up my wife that morning. So it's only me and my two children in the house. So this is what happened. When I went down to our stairs, then my stomach, there's really abdominal cramping, and my stomach becomes rigid. It's really hard. So I said, I cannot go, I can't do anything. So I thought I'm going to call the 911 that time. And then while I'm driving, I put the car in hazard. But part cut the short stories, I'm still alive. Amen? Okay, so praise God. So anyway, so that's the will of the Lord. So we don't know what's going to happen in our life every day, every minute. We don't know. Okay? So it's better to be with God. Amen? All right, so <clears throat> for our message for today, this is the message from Paul. Okay, so I praise God for for another strength, another life. Okay, call it another life. And I praise God also for uh, for the help of last Saturday. So we have this one. We printed some of the t-shirts for our company. So now let's see. Let's look at your Bible and look at verse 19. In verse 19 to 23, it's a message from Paul. Okay, as I've said, it's not going to be hard, long enough. So as the verses today suggest. Of Paul, he says here, becoming all men, becoming all things to all men. Okay, he says here, even though I am free man with no master, I have become slave to people to bring many to Christ. Okay, so this message, Paul is saying that to become all things to all men. Okay, so now how are you going to reach for other people? The question is, how are we going to reach for other people? We are here every Sunday. We are here right now, okay, because we have a purpose. We have a purpose to, we have a purpose in each one of us to reach to other people, especially to non-believers, to none who are lost. So when we read, when we read this, uh, this uh, verse from verse 19 to 23, there is a whole goal is to reach other people, other believers, okay, other non-believers. Okay. So he says here, when I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. Okay. When I was with those who followed the Jewish law, I do live under that law. Even though I am not subject to that to the law, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I do live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. So Paul is saying here that to be able to reach for other people, you have to connect to them. Okay? You have to connect to them. You have to reach them where they are. Okay? Where they are. For example, this message, as it says, is our kind of similar 
as introduction in our discipleship process. So that's where we're gonna do all the leaders and what we're gonna do in uh, in our discipleship process in Window of Scotia. So number one, we have to connect. Okay, to be able to reach out to other people, you have to connect to one another. Okay, you have to find common grounds. Okay, you have to find. For example, I cannot reach to all the people. I can connect to the people, to the person that it's in my age or same job as my as mine okay or your co-workers okay so you find the common grounds to connect number two in our discipleship process will be belong okay the person to be able to be with God number one we have to connect that person needs to be connected okay if what look at this one okay if some of us here okay we don't know each other before how do we connect we connect from one another right so you connect from one another. So we, I, you connect from one another and you find common grounds. If you can find common grounds, you cannot invite people to Christ. Okay, so Paul is saying here, to be able to bring people to Christ, to Jesus Christ, you have to find the common grounds. If you bring the if you bring Christ already, if immediately without finding the connection, then it's hard to connect to that people. Is that right? Right. So number three in our discipleship will be belong. Number three, after you, after that person will belong, and then he or she should believe, and then after believe, then serve, and then after serve, then leave. Okay. So I'm talking about the discipleship that we're gonna do in Wino, Scotia will be part of our Bible study. Okay. So with this message is similar to that. Okay. This message is similar to that from verse 19 to 23. Saying here, Paul to be able to reach other people. He says here, when I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. So to be able to reach to that person, to the Jewish people, he became, when I was with you, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who followed the Jewish law, I too live under that law. Okay, so it's very very simple it means to be able to reach for other people we have to connect to them okay Paul did that in, in this verse and says here even though I am not subject to the law I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law and when I am with the Gentiles who don't follow the Jewish law I to live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ I to live I to live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. So Paul is saying here, even though he joined them, he don't forget the law of Christ. To obey the law of Christ. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness. For I want to bring the weak to Christ. Okay, so now as I said, what's our goal? What's our goal? Every Sunday we're here. And what's our purpose? What is our purpose? What is our goal? We should have a goal. Amen? In, each, in every day, once we wake up, we have a goal. All the, all the people who join the sports, like in the runner, they have a goal. The goal is to reach the finish line. Amen? Is that right? So, in here as Christian, as a believers, believers of Jesus Christ, we have a goal to reach. And what's our goal? Of course, to reach the finish line. So, finish line and to earn, to have that eternal life. How about for the other people? Do we have that same goal? Do we have that same goal? Every Sunday if we're here, and if, as our campaign before, that each one, win one. Bring one, win one. Okay? So bring one, each one, bring one, win one. So each one of us, if we bring one, we're going to win one. Okay, so our message for today is win Nova Scotia. Okay, win Nova Scotia. Let's talk about win. Okay, so we should have a goal in our life. Being a Christian, our goal is to reach for the loss. Okay, as I said, even though you are here in this church or you are in another church or you are in another another church, if you don't have a goal, if you're only sitting there 
just for maintenance. I, I go to I go to church every Sunday. For what? For maintenance. What do you mean by maintenance? Just to maintain, maintain my spiritual life. Are we like that? Or are we the one who's God's talking to us that you reach to your classmate, you reach to your co-workers, you reach to your friend, bring them to God. We are believers of Jesus Christ and we are not called just to sit, you know, just to be alone in our life. We are here to bring the word, to bring the gospel to other people. Amen? So to do that, to be able to do that, we have to reach, we have to connect to other people. Okay, so then our goal is to bring the loss, to bring the loss to Jesus Christ. As he says in Luke 19, okay, if, you have, if you're charting down, as he said in Luke 19, 10, he says here, but Jesus said that he came to save and to save that which was lost. He came to save and to save who was lost. And we should do become like Jesus Christ. Amen? So in here, we will see here, so if we, if we are going to imitate Jesus Christ, Paul imitate Jesus Christ too. And we're talking about Paul here. Okay? So let's read from let's read from 1 Corinthians 10, 33. It says here, just as I just I always please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of the many, so that they may be saved. This is what Paul's goal. To save the lost. Okay? To reach out for other people. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. Because uh, I think there is more there's more uh, Canadian coming to this church. Praise God. I mean uh, uh, English. Okay, I mean, okay. Um, so praise God. Paul's goal is to bring other other non believers to Jesus Christ. But he says in verse 19 to 23, to be able to bring to them, you have to connect to them. You have to find common grounds. And later on, we're going to talk about, oh, okay, to be able to bring my neighborhood, I have to do what they're doing. We'll talk about that later. Okay. So it says here in 1 Corinthians 10, 33, this is what Paul's goal. And he says, in, uh, continuously, in 11, verse 1, okay, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, so that's, that's connected from 1033 up to 11 1. It says here, be imitators of me just as I also am of Christ. So imitate me as I imitate Christ. Okay? So we're studying about Paul, and Paul's um, goal is to reach for the people, for the lost, for this uh, for the lost, and that's our goal as well, to imitate Christ, to reach for the lost. Amen. So there will, there's different gifts. Maybe some of you may be thinking, I'm not a pastor, I'm not an evangelist, I'm not a prophet, so how can I reach to other people? You can reach to other people to bring the good news to them, just to bring what you know about your good news, about how you are saved. Okay, so it's very simple. Just tell them about what you have received from God. Amen? So in here, we'll see here, that to use to be to to be to connect with other people, as I've said, you have to find common grounds and be all things to all men. Right? As an example, when we are young people, when we are young people in the Philippines, we have a we have a friend, we have a classmate who we invited them in a family day, in a family day, not a family day, in a night camp, night, youth camp, not youth camp, overnight, overnight. And that friend, we invited that friend, so of course he's our classmate, so we can connect to them, right? we can find common ground with him. So you know what happened? He continued to serve the Lord, and also he's seeking to save, or to, to find, to bring other non-believers to Jesus Christ, and now also he's going to be a pastor. Okay, study. I think he's going to study first. He's taking to study first. So, you gotta get to study first than myself. So, anyway, which, yeah. So, the important thing is when we bring him, when we brought him to that youth camp, to that youth gathering, okay, he's also being a ser our servant to serve God, to find other people. 
Okay? So it is hard for all of us, it is hard especially for me, it is hard for the ministry head of this church, okay, to minister to Nova Scotia. Is that right? Yes, it's hard to minister to the whole Nova Scotia. But with the help of one another, like a networking, okay? If I'm able to minister to one of you, and that one of you is able to minister to one another, and that person minister to one another, then we're able to reach to reach the Nova Scotia. So our church name, World International, because we are World Worship. The O is outreach, to reach out. R is to have to build relationship with one another, but especially to have a relationship with Jesus and discipleship to become disciples of Jesus. So Paul says that I might save some. So this is a crucial goal that we should have, each one of us. Okay? As I've said, we are not here. Okay? It takes time. Okay? No, don't rush. Okay? Maybe you're, some of you will say, Oh, brother, you're rushing me. Okay? I'm not ready yet. Pray about it. Okay? For God will give you courage to invite others. To invite your friends, your family, to know, to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So it is a crucial goal to each one of us. If a person is not saved, then what you call that person? If a person is not saved, then he is lost. If a person don't know the answer, then if we don't know the answer, then we don't know the answer. We are lost. So those are the only choices. We have heaven and hell. And we're not talking about temporary situation where, where this is only like temporary. It is real. Okay? Heaven and hell is real. Okay? As I've said, there are so many prophets, missionaries, evangelists all over the world, and they're trying to reach out to other people, to other non-believers. So Jesus described it. The hell, okay? Jesus described hell as the place of unquenchable fire. In Mark, in Mark 9, 43. In Matthew 8, 12, it says also where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, so it is crucial goal for each one of us to bring our friend, co-worker, classmate to not only them, other than believers to Jesus Christ. Amen? It is a crucial goal. And Paul always remind other people to reach for those people who's, who's not, who don't have a relationship with God. So, in Luke 16, 27 to 28, if you go on Luke 16, let's go in Luke 16, Luke 16, verse 27, 28, it says here, that Jesus is telling here about the rich man. Okay? In verse 27 of Luke 16, it says here, Then the rich man said, Please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home. For I have five brothers, and I want him to warn them so that they don't end up in this place of torment. This is a story about the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Okay? If you're going to read the whole story, you know this story. This is the story about the important to, to know that there is hell, which is, is a crucial goal for, for each one of us. So here Jesus telling of the rich man, the plains pleading with Abraham to send someone from the dead to warn his brothers so that they will not come to this place of torment. Okay, so that person, the rich man, saying from hell to, to Abraham, to send a reminders to my brother so that they won't fall here as well. So we are here, each one of you. Okay? Whether you're young, whether you're on the right age or you know, to bring others to Jesus Christ. God is telling us, as in our uh, letter O, outreach, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Mark 16, 15. Mark, Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20, the same 
verse. Go into all the nations. So go. So here we have a picture of the rich man who is in in the hell who's asking Father Abraham. And he says there that the chasm. Our the song a while ago, the chasm is far the chasm is far too wide. No one can reach out in both places. Okay? So he said, Abraham said, we cannot send anyone from, from here to there and either from you to here. So we reach, okay, we cross that to because of Jesus Christ. Okay? We are saved because of Jesus Christ. So when we talk about people getting saved, they are not getting saved from law, self-esteem, or from life or failure. They are being saved eternally. Okay? They are getting saved from God's eternal wrath and judgment on their sins to eternal life with God in heaven. So it is a crucial goal. Okay, so if some of you may think, oh yeah, it's, it's nothing, okay, being here is just what, what is now, okay, we should also invest eternally in the future, eternally, okay. As I believe uh, with our brothers here, uh, Brother Donix is also into investments, finances, financial, right? So, as, as far as my understanding about uh, that kind of uh, 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 work is that they're trying to ask the people to look for investment, okay? Financially, to be financially stable in the future, to save for your children's school, okay? To save for your retirement, okay? But how about us? How about each one of us? How about our soul? Are we are we looking to that? Oh, I have retirement already. I have retirement in heaven. Do we have that retirement already? Okay, so that's our goal, each one of us, to reach to other people. And then you will ask, it's hard to reach for other people. Then let's go from Corinthians, first Corinthians 9, 9. 19 to 23, it says they're fine the common grounds. Okay? So later we're going to talk about So, it is a crucial goal. So, that's why we are here in this church to bring other people. So, some of you can say, I cannot say. Or you cannot say, I cannot say. But at least, you bring that people closer to God. Amen? Praise God because uh, we have friends uh, like like right now, it's a good example, right? Okay? Uh, we didn't expect this, but we have uh, Sir Lisa to bring his friend Adam to this church. Praise God. Amen? Praise God. Okay? Bring one, you win one. For Jesus. Amen? Do you remember the story about the starfish? Some of you already read I told this story about the starfish, okay? There are lots of starfish in the ocean. Okay, remember that? Okay, there are lots of starfish in the ocean and there's a little boy who's getting pick up picking up the starfish and putting it back to the ocean. Okay? And there's a big guy saying at the at his back saying, Why are you doing that? He said, to save this starfish back to the water or else it will die. Okay? But the big guy says, Don't you know that in millions of shore in the world there are, there are thousands of shores, or millions of shores, or thousands of shores in the world. There are millions of starfish. But like the boy said, just simply, I just pick up that one. I save that one. Okay. So we cannot save the whole world. Okay. We cannot save the whole world. I cannot, I cannot bring people the whole this message to Nova Scotia by myself. But at least, if one of you, like as I say, praise God, like Sister Lisa. If one of you bring this word of gospel or the gospel of Jesus Christ, your good, the good news about Jesus to one, and that one will bring to other, and that one will bring to other, it changed lives. Okay? You changed lives of that of that of that person. So yes, we cannot say it's only God. But God used us. Okay? God used saved people to tell to the lost people. Okay, so turning your mess into message. When I'm when I'm making this message, I said most of the, it's like um uh, 
the previous message we're just you know getting and putting in here. Do you remember about the message of mess into message? Right? Your mess. Who you are before and being a messenger. Okay? Your mess, you become a message. Your mess before, if you are this, if you are like this before or that or that, and that message you can bring other. You can use that mess to connect to other. Our pastor in the Philippines, um, he is a drug addict, he is a criminal, he is a, I, you know, okay, so he's been there, okay, so he's able to connect with other people, okay, if there's, if there's a guy who's like a drug addict in that church, in our church, so he can connect. I'm not saying to be drug addict or to go back to your old self, okay, I'm saying to use that connection. To use how you go into connect. How are you? How did you find Jesus Christ when you are in a mess? And help that person who's that same situation to find Jesus. Okay? Uh, bro or sis is how this is who's Jesus. Okay? It is not, oh, bro, him, it is. It's not. I believe, as also Pastor Heaven says, when we're doing our, uh, our not one one, but we, on our meeting, he says, it's like a chicken, a chick, you know, a chicken, okay, a chicken. Where is, there's a food, if the chicken is not hungry, if you bring the food to the chicken, the chicken is not hungry, they will go away, okay? So just open your hands, and then that chicken will come to eat, to that food. So same with us. Find common grounds to connect to other people. So that story of the starfish is one of the story that, an illustration, okay? We're able to save another, even though one. Find your common cause. So God uses men and women who are compelled by the goal of saving some. If God is talking to you right now, or even before, and you're just hesitating, Lord, am I, did you call me or not? Okay? It's private number. So some of you may ask me sometimes, uh, brother or pastor, did you call me? It's private number. Because my phone is private number. Okay? So if you're not sure, ask God. Okay? Call back. Lord, did you call me for this reason to evangelize? To bring others to Jesus. So pray for them. To be able to bring that person to Jesus Christ. Of course, it's hard to bring that person to Jesus Christ. First of all, you have to pray for that person. Pray for that person. Lord, I'm praying for this person, this co-worker, this classmate, or this friend. This my family closer to you. Okay? And God will talk to that person. Okay, God will move that person to be able for you to open up, to easily to open up what the goodness that you have received from Jesus Christ. Amen? So here, as I've said, during my initiation, not initiation, okay, during my first, uh, my first uh, year as a youth pastor in the Philippines, I do some Bible study in the Philippines by myself. Okay? And I asked the pastor, our pastor in the Philippines, I said, how can I do that? Okay? The pastor said, you go, okay, this is what you're going to do, okay? You're going to go to each, each house, eh, our members or some of their families, and you, you do a Bible study to them. He said, but I have a question. What if they have a question? Okay, that's my question to, to, to my pastor. What if they have a question? So in that time, then I have to study. I have to remember some of the verse, okay? Some of them, I, uh, you know. So... I have to study. So that's my initiation when I was when I was doing my first Bible study in the Philippines. Back 2000, 2011 to 2010. 2010. Or 2000, yeah, 2010. When I came back from Canada. So first I have to understand about the good news. Okay, so here, how are we going to reach other people? How are we going to tell them about the gospel of God? Jesus Christ. First, it's very simple. Just remember how did you find Jesus Christ in your life? Or how God changed your lives? Tell that to that person. Of course, we have to find out about there's a sin. Okay? That all, all falls short of the glory of God. In Romans 3.23 and in verse 6.23 I remember, I think, in verse Romans 6.23 that the punishment of of sin is death. So if you're going to talk to that person, of course there's a sin. 
And we have, second, we have Jesus Christ, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that for us won't be perished. Okay, won't be punished by God. It says there, at the judgment day, the full wrath of, Jesus, of God will be upon to those who don't believe in Him. Okay? So we have a crucial goal, each one of us, to reach for the loss. And third, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you trust in Him. It says in John 1, 12, For all to those who believe, give it the authority to become children of God. So if you be, so that's, you know, that's just mainly the reason of our of the gospel. Okay? We are we are all sinners. All of us are sinners. Okay? Who's who's a sinner? Who's not a sinner? Who is not a sinner? Who is not a sinner? Who is not a sinner? Margaret, you're not a sinner? Saved by grace. You're saved. Who is not a sinner now? Who is not a sinner now? Who is sinner? Please raise your hand. Don't, yeah, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Okay. Who is sinner? Sino yung makasalanan? Who is sinner? Okay. Who is sinner now? Who is not sinner now? Amen. Okay. So this is the thing. All of us were sinners. We are sinners. Okay. But because of Jesus Christ, we are saved through His grace. By His grace. Through faith. Okay. So we are not sinners. Though we sin, but our, the sin that we get punished, okay, we are saved by God. We are saved by Jesus Christ. Okay? We are saved by His grace, not by our works, okay? It's not by our works, okay? You cannot save yourself by your works, like by good works or, you know, but through Jesus Christ. Okay? So we are sinners, but we are saved by grace. Amen? So if you trust God, it's the it's same as uh, trusting a pilot. Okay? From Halifax to Toronto, you trust that pilot that uh, this pilot of this airplane, of this uh, aircraft, will bring me to Toronto. If you don't trust that pilot, then you're not going to ride that airplane. Amen? It's the same as our belief in Jesus Christ. If you believe, if you trust, and if you have faith in God, you believe that Jesus Christ, once you die, you will be saved. Last Thursday, I thought, when I'm going to die. Okay? <laughs> I thought I'm going to die. I said, if I die, Lord, I am saved. If you die right now, are you saved? Question. If you die right now, are you saved? Yes. How many percent? 100%. Praise God. Great. So, just believe, accept that you are our Caesars, but through Jesus Christ you are saved by His grace. Okay? And have faith about your belief of Trust Jesus Christ. Amen? Alright, so that's our, okay, that's our, for the gospel, okay, to reach for other people. But let's go back again in our message in 1 Corinthians 19 to 23. We're almost there. So winning others to Christ is, of course, presenting the gospel to lost people without needlessly offending them. Okay, as I've said, if the person, if you're, if you're trying to uh, to reach out for that people and it offend him. Of course, it's hard. It's hard to reach for that person. So first, you have to pray for that person. Lord, talk to that person. Okay, I cannot do it by myself. Talk to my family. Okay, talk to my friend. Okay, use other people. If it's not me, then use other people. Pray. Okay, pray to God. So. To be able to present the gospel to other people, of course, before, okay, before you reach to other people, as it says in 19 to 23, you have to know who you are first. If you don't know who you are, then when you join them, when you join, when you find common ground with them, then maybe you will be lost. You're with me? If you're trying to connect to other people, for example, if that person that you're trying to reach is in the bar, or drinking, and you're trying to reach for that person, okay, of course, you gotta go to that bar, okay, and then you gotta sit down with him, even though you say, ah, no, I'm, not, I'm not drinking, okay, and that person, okay, yeah, okay, you're talking, you're talking, but if you don't know who you are in Jesus Christ, or who you are, who you are, what you have from God, 
then you instead of instead of reaching that people, then maybe you're the one who will snap by the other person. Okay, so Paul is saying here, okay, this is our message for today. Paul is saying here to reach out for other people is to find a common ground. Okay? So if other our purpose here right now is to reach is to seek for the lost. Okay? Your neighborhoods, your friends, okay, your family, your co-workers, your classmates, okay? If you're trying to connect with them and you're not showing who you are, there don't there's no difference. Do you remember the story about a young girl, a young teen who's going through college, university? I think I preached that uh, three months ago. Okay, you remember that? That the first, that young girl goes into university, the mother says, all right, uh, daughter, okay, or, okay, you're going to college, but be careful with your Christianity, okay? Be careful, okay, or uh, guard your Christianity, okay? So this is what the, the young, the young teens did, okay? He went to he went to university and then he came back. After he came back of the summer vacation, okay, the mother says, How's your Christianity? How's your being Christian? How's your Christian? And she said, It is I'm perfect, mother. I'm perfect. Oh, wow, praise God, you're perfect. Okay. But she said, Nobody knows that I'm a Christian. Okay. Nobody knows that I'm a Christian. So I protected my being a Christian. Nobody knows. So if you're trying to connect to others and you know, that person that you're trying to connect doesn't see the change in you, doesn't see Christ in you, okay, then that person you cannot you're not able to bring that person to Christ if your person if you are the same with that person. So Paul is saying here, he's reaching to the Jews, okay? So he asks, if we're trying to reach with other people and our friends, our neighbors, our family and other friends, if we are not changed if there's no transformation, if there's no relationship with God, there will be no transformation. Okay? But if that person sees you as a different man, oh, then if you bring that good news, then he can believe in you. Right? But if you're bringing this, this is Christ, then you have to believe in this Christ. Because this is... And then, one time, he heard you cursing. How would you, how would you that person, believe that person is cursing? Right? So, be careful. Okay, so it says here in verse 22 B, yes, I try to find common grounds with everyone. This is in 19, in verse 9, 19, uh, 22 B, it says here, yes, I try to find common grounds with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. Find the common grounds, okay? Try to connect with them. I do everything to spread the good news, share it in its blessings. So in here, it says here, first, there should be an attitude as a slave to all. Paul is saying here in verse 19 that being a slave to all. Okay? I remember when I came here first in Canada in 2009, before I became a registered nurse in 2010, in 2009, my job is a helper, okay? or like a cargador. Helper of a furniture, furniture, uh, nothing fancy truck, okay? For a furniture helper for three months. And then I became a caregiver, a cleaner, okay? So being a serv uh, being a slave to all, okay? Being a servant. So this is a story of of mine as being a cleaner. So when I went to that I worked for an agency that time, I worked for an agency. Uh okay, I'm not gonna say that uh, agency. So I worked for that agency and then that agency bring me to Dartmouth. Okay? They said that you're gonna look after this old lady. Okay, so I went there. Full gear, type A, scrub suit. Okay, I call it this full, uh, full gear. Scrub suit, scrub suit, okay? So, when I went there, I said, who's the, who's, uh, who's the old lady that I'm gonna look at? The old lady opened the door, and he, she is strong, okay? She is strong. I said, I, I think my mind, she's not weak, okay? She, I thought she's, she may be in the wheelchair that I have to feed, I have to clean, okay? No. This is what she said. She said, go into the basement. Once you open, you open the door, go into the basement and clean the basement. She said, well, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't complain. Because my, my job to this is also a caregiver, also a light house, light house, house, housekeeping, okay? So she said, 
go to the basement and clean the basement and after you clean the basement go upstairs in each room the washroom and then the kitchen as well please to do that in three hours okay to do that in three hours the whole house so this this will happen when i'm cleaning the, the basement there are lots of rooms in the basement in dark one okay important hey so imagine that house important okay. big house i clean the basement i clean the i clean the upper room okay and then this is what she said this is what he said the, the husband said is this, is this your job also in the Philippines? You're a cleaner too, okay? And then I just, I just quiet myself because I'm a registered nurse in the Philippines. So when I came here, I didn't bring as a registered nurse, okay? Okay. I'll say I'm a head nurse in the Philippines in the emergency, and then when I came here, most of us, most of the Filipinos, they have a profession in the Philippines. Some of them are managers. Some of them are higher position. CEO or higher position, they're paid, they got paid higher. But once they come here, once we come here in Canada, we start in a low position. We serve, okay? Paul is saying here, I became slave to all, okay? If you are slave, you don't have to complain. You just do what you ask to do, okay? So that time, when the path is, when I clean the house, I should clean the house for four hours. I cannot clean the house, but I did it because I don't want the agency to be um, to be disappointed, okay? So I clean the house, I think two and a half, 45 minutes, so that I still have time to walk to catch my bus, okay? So this will happen. He said to me, is this your job also in the Philippines? You're a very good cleaner, okay? And then I said to my wife, when I, when I was in the bus, we were waiting the bus at the Portland State, I was really tired, I said, I'm thinking to say that, no, I'm a registered nurse, but no. I just simply said, yes, okay. I just simply said to the man, yes, okay. I didn't, I didn't boast about being a registered nurse in the Philippines, okay. Same with Paul, he didn't boast about all his acknowledgement. He became a slave to all. He says here, even though I am a free man with no master, I became slave to all people to bring many to Christ. Same. Us. If you are being a servant of God, forget who you are. Okay, forget whether you are a CEO, whether you are you're earning you're earning per hour. If you're earning forty five dollars an hour, wow, praise God. If you're earning forty dollars an hour, praise God. If you're earning thirty five, thirty, twenty five, twenty, fifteen, or ten, praise God. But it doesn't matter. Forget who you are. Become slave to other people. Okay? Try to reach them. Okay? Don't say, oh, I'm the CEO. CEO, I don't have to reach for that person. Okay? I'm the manager here. Okay? I don't have to reach for that person. But no. To be able to reach for that for other people, same with, with Paul, become, become a slave to all people. Amen? Praise God. So here, let's see from verse 20 to 23. We're almost there. So it says, it says here, when I was with the Jew, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who follow the Jewish law, I could live under the law. When though I am not subject to the law, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. Okay, there are different there's, there's different people in this in this category. The Jewish, those who are under the law, those who do who don't have the law, which is the Gentiles, okay? In us in our life, if we're gonna reach for other people. We gotta reach for a non-believers who is like the Gentiles saying the Bible, okay? If you're trying to reach your neighborhood, if you're trying to reach your classmate, your co-workers, or you're trying those non-believers, okay, you try the common grounds. But if you're trying to reach for them, be careful not for you to stumble or not for you to let them stumble. Okay? So he says here in verse 20, to the Jew, Paul became a Jew. Paul is a Jew, right? Paul is a Jew. But he left being a Jew. He left the Judaism when God called him to preach the gospel. Paul is a Jew. That's why he says here in verse 20, when I was with the Jew, I, Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. But Paul left the Judaism, the Jew, the Jewish, when God called him. Because it's strictly 
It's so strict. The Jews are so strictly in the law of God. Okay? They're following the law of Moses. You have to obey this. You have to, you have to obey this. Okay? But we are not in the law. We are in the law of Christ. Amen? Maybe some of you, this, the good example of this is, maybe some of you are asking, um, okay. maybe some of you are asking, are we allowed to eat blood? Are we allowed to eat blood? Some religions, some denominations in the Philippines, they don't eat the blood of the pigs. They don't eat. Okay? But as we can eat whatever we want to eat. Okay? Because it says, what comes, what we eat is not what defiles you. It's what comes out from your mouth. Okay? So, in verse... Two, so, it says here that becoming to live like them. Okay? Just to give you an example, in the Philippines, when I'm going to visit our our province in in in, in Calamba, okay? You know that province okay, in Calamba. I have to speak like them. Okay, or we have a who's Bisaya here? Bisaya or other accent, other other language. Who has other language or other new 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 Brunswick new found new found that? I speak English. I speak English. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But there's also other accent here in Nova Scotia, right? St. John, right? Or New, is that Newfoundland. Newfoundland. There's an accent in Newfoundland. They're, they're speak fast. I'm from Newfoundland. You're Newfoundland, but you don't have an accent of Newfoundland. <laughs> okay, so when I, was, when I was in the Philippines, I have, when I go to that uh, place, I have to speak them. I, I have to speak the accent. Okay, we don't have other language, but I have to speak the uh, language, like Batangueño. Okay? We have E, eh, E. Eh. In our in our province in Calamba, we have the same like that. We have K, okay, and some other words, and we have some Visaya here. Ayo ayo, ayo ayo. Okay. So when I study in Manila, okay, this, when I study in Manila, in Tondo, Manila, okay, some of you may familiar about Tondo, okay. Who's familiar about Tondo? Oh, it's Nanay. Okay. You're familiar with Tundo. Okay. When I study in Manila, Tundo is like a dark place. No, I should not say that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Tundo is not. Uh, Tundo is like a. Uh, uh, Tundo is like a. Um, okay. It's not a good place. Okay. It's not a good place. Okay. Huh? Uh, uh, it's not a good place. Okay. Okay. This one. Bronx, okay, that, okay, that, okay. You know about it, okay. For, but it's not a good place, okay? It's not a good place. Especially in our place, okay? In where we, my grandmother, we're in uh, Banco side, okay? We're in Banco side. So when I study in Manila for three months, okay, of course I have to live dressed like them. Okay, so imagine, do, 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 I have to dress like them. Don't think that people in Tundo, some of them don't have shirt. Okay, they they're in the street and don't have shirt, and they're just rubbing their tummy. Okay, I'm not like that. <laughs> don't think like me like that. Right? When I was in Tundo, okay, I have to dress like them. I have I have to walk like them, but I don't have to speak like them. Okay, I mean if, because if I'm gonna if I'm gonna dress as Caviteño, I work from Cavite, and Cavite and and up in Manila, Tundo are their classroom before. If you're in Cavite, you stay there. If you're in Tondo, you stay there. Okay? So one time, I dressed like Cavite, you know, right? So I put the scarf here, I put the scarf here, and I walk there, I put the scarf. That was the time when I was a uh, young people. So I put the scarf here, and I walk there, of course. I put the scarf, but I walk like in Tondo. So they think that, oh, uh, this is uh, angry man or, uh, yeah, Arrogant. Okay, so I walk with that. And then I heard some of the people, let's hit this guy. Let's hit this guy. Okay? But I'm not afraid because I know I am from Tondo. I, I grew up in Tondo as well. When I was a kid, two years old, three years old, four, until three years old, I go there. Okay? And I have lots of uncles. So I'm not afraid. Okay, I'm not afraid. I just call my uncle and there are seven of them and they will be with me with my back. So I'm not afraid. So what I'm trying to say here, if you're going to reach for other people, okay? Try to find their common grounds. Okay? 
okay? Be with them, okay? But if there's, you know, it would be hard for each one of us to reach for that person, to those people, if we're speaking, if we're doing what they're doing as well, okay? There will be no distinct distinction, okay? So, reach to all people, but be careful not to blend in their world this time. Okay, so this is what Paul is saying here. So, we, we should reach and seek for them, for this, not us, okay? I have like, someone here in, uh, you know, the Amish people, the Amish. There's uh, that's another group of Christians, the Amish, who withdraw themselves from the world. The world, I mean here, the world, right? They withdraw themselves. They don't pay their taxes because they said we're not, you know, we're not getting anything from the government. We're not connected to the government. But they're here. But they don't want. This is what the thing is. If we are like, you know, okay, that, that kind of uh, religion, the Amish, how are we going to reach for the other people if you are withdrawn from the people? If you are withdrawn from the world, how are you going to reach for them? What? Don't cross this border. This border is for the Amish only. They don't have cell phones, laptops, TV, no nothing. Okay? But they are Christians. They believe in God. Okay, but the thing is, God called us to reach for the other people. Go to all the nation, baptize them. Okay, so how are we going to reach for other people if we separated ourselves? The widow of Scotia people are only believers. Okay, we don't try to reach for other people. No, we are open for everyone. Okay, amen. We are open for everyone. And but there is a, there is a one thing before we close. There is one thing. A church in the U.S. I think Justin was the name of that uh, church, the worship team, it's blend with the uh, board songs, flat irons, the one that we watch, okay. There is, okay, watch that, watch that in YouTube, okay. There's a church in the U.S. where there's praise and worship is worthy song. Okay, they said, that's their, their concern is, or their explanation is to reach for the people, the worthy people, of course. If we're trying to reach for the people and once we come here and then we we'll praise that hallelujah, some of them will be afraid. Okay? So their explanation is so that if the people can sit down and listening, it seems like the people are listening to concert. So they're blending the worthy songs, the praise worship songs, the godly songs, worthy songs, praise and worship. Look at it in YouTube. Flat irons, worship table. Okay? There are some of them are saying, oh, it's nice that you're trying to reach for other people, but there's a danger. Danger in it. Don't try too close. I mean, what they're doing is, instead of bringing other people, they're the ones getting into the world. Okay? The Bible says, we are out of this world. Okay? We are not of this world. Okay? But we're here to connect to the people of the world, to the lost. Amen? So, let's imitate Jesus, let's imitate Paul as he Im imitate Christ. Amen? The mission and goal is to bring them to Jesus Christ. The mission and goal of us is to bring the lost to Jesus Christ. Not to bring us back to the world. Amen? Let's just read this one from as our final, uh, our conclusion for today. This verse from Paul, he has a passion to reach for the soul. For the loss. So in verse 19 it says here that I may win more. Okay. In verse 19 it says here that I may win more. In verse 20 it says here that I may win the Jews. The Jews. In verse 20 that I may win those who are under the law. In verse 21 it says here when I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I could live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. That I might win those who are without God. We are here to bring those who without God. In verse 22, that I might win the weak. That I may be by all means save some. In verse 23, that I can do all things for the sake of the gospel. We are doing this for the sake of the gospel. Amen? We are doing this for His glory. Not for your glory. Not for we know as Kosha. Okay? All churches. All churches in the world, Nova Scotia, in Halifax, it's all the same. I mean, being a Christian. It's not about whether you're here, whether you're in faith, or in rock church, or other churches. We're doing this all for the glory of God. Amen? All for Him. You're not doing, if you're trying to reach for the people, you're not doing it.
for the pastor. Okay, if you're doing it because God told you to do so. If you are going to do it, God gave you that heart. Amen? Let's bow our head. Hallelujah, God. Father God, thank you, Lord, for your word, oh God, for your reminder, oh God, Jesus. Lord, I pray to you, Lord Jesus, right now, that be with us, oh God, the person that we're praying, oh God, the person, our family, our friends, oh God, that we're trying to reach, oh God, reach them, oh God, right now, as we pray, oh God. Lord, you're the one who's able to reach them, but reach us also, oh God, to have courage, oh God, and wisdom to bring the good news to them. Father God, thank you, Lord, O oh God, for my brother and sister here. I am not alone. We are not alone, O oh God, to bring your good word to Nova Scotia. Lord, let win Nova Scotia. Let us win Nova Scotia. Help us. Let us be an, one of your servant, O oh God. together with many churches here in Nova Scotia to bring people, to, to bring the lost to you, Lord, O oh God. We pray this, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody say, Amen, amen and Amen.